welcome to a special edition of the Youth Time Show where we hold talks with the high and mighty in diplomatic relations to discuss issues that pertain to development and cooperation. And well, to us at the Grace Life Leadership Center, we probe on issues that revolve around the youth, which also aids in national development. And joining us for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one is Ambassador Enrique Excorza, the Mexican ambassador to Ghana, to discuss every issue that you would like to know as a youth. Do join us. We'll be right back. So you are welcome, His Excellency Ambassador Enrique Excorza. I know you have a lot of interesting stories to tell about yourself, but if you could sum it all up in one paragraph, if you could do it briefly, who is the man behind the office? Who is His Excellency Ambassador Enrique Excorza? Well, let me, let me start by saying that I'm very, very happy to be here today with you, you're especially because I know that your audience is the type of audience that I really like a lot. Wow. I do believe a lot in youth. I do believe that the, the youth is the future of the humanity. Mm -hmm. We want to be resilient countries and strong countries. We have to rely on our youth. Okay. And the more we work with our youth at the early ages, it's, it's better for us to achieve the, the results we, we want. Mm -hmm. I was young, long time ago, much to my regret, but uh, obviously I was young one day, and I had dreams, mm -hmm. and I had so many dreams. Who's the mind behind now this position? Well, I'm going to describe who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in Mexico City. Um, I'm one of my, uh, in my family, we're uh, four uh, siblings. I'm the second, my sister is the eldest, then the sort of two boys. And my father was a, a driver of public transportation in Mexico. He barely made sixth grade in school. My mom was only second grade in school. So as you can see, I mean, I don't come from a background where my family members were professionals, etc. Mm -hmm. That was a major challenge at the beginning in my life, of course. Mm -hmm. But you know, they taught me the most important lessons that I want to share with your audience, especially their youth. Mm -hmm. If you have a dream, you have to go for it. Wow. And you should never surrender. Mm -hmm. You have to work hard to identify what is that dream that you have in your mind mm -hmm. and go and work mm -hmm. and devote yourself with all your energy, with all your passion. But you have to identify that objective in life. If you're lost in, lost in the way, you don't know where to go, well, the first thing you have to do is stop and see what do you want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what my mom told me. Wow. And she said, like, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, I don't know. Well, think about it and think it hard. And I thought about that extensively till the moment that I, I identified myself as someone that I hated conflict. I didn't like people arguing. I didn't mm -hmm. like disputes. Mm -hmm. I didn't like to see my, my classmates uh, fighting for whatever thing. I didn't like sometimes the authoritari authoritarianism of my professors, you mm -hmm. know, when they overimpose so many task upon us, and I said, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I want to be like a negotiator. I want to make peace, you know. I want to, to, to make people talk. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand what was I thinking. So I talked to a, to a teacher at, 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 at the school. I said, why I like so much this? I mean, I don't like to see conflicts. So, oh, you should be a diplomat. And I said, what's a diplomat? Wow. I had no idea what was mm -hmm. a diplomat, no? And he explained to me that a diplomat is someone that basically is very savvy in international relations, mm -hmm. international negotiations, that understand that there's so many ways to avoid conflict yeah. by, you know, talking in appropriate terms. And you have to know those terms. And that's mm -hmm. diplomacy. And I said, okay, it was a little bit elaborate in the beginning for me. But I just love the idea of finding that as a way of life, to, wow. to identify that as my objective in life. And I said, yes, I, I, I need to know more about this. I learned about international relations, mm -hmm. and then I started a diplomatic career. No? Wow. I studied international relationship uh, back in Mexico City. 
The most important lessons I learned from my upbringing with my dad, with my mom, was to, to, to really fight for what you really like in life. Wow. You know, they couldn't give me as much education as I wanted. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to a PhD, a master's degree in a foreign university. Say, so we cannot go that far. I mean, we don't have the means to well, support you in that, in that regard. What we can do is we can send you to public schools. You can be properly trained there, receive your education, but take advantage of the education you have at hand mm -hmm. and be the best. Right. And, I, and I, that's what I, I, I understood, that my chances were limited, but I have to do the best with, with them. So for me, that was the extra motivation I needed in life because I, I say I have nothing against the, the type of, of the line of work of my dad. Mm -hmm. He was, I told you, he was a driver, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of uh, public transportation in Mexico. And he said, don't look yourself in my mirror. I mean, you, you deserve more. You wow. can do better than that. And I said, well, how? He said, just take advantage of your school. Take advantage of the education you're receiving. Maybe it's not the very best, but it's what you can get. Mm -hmm. And I did the best out of it. So, so I, I said, once I finish my school, always achieving the best degrees, I was a nerd in my class, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I studied really, really hard right. because, again, I was extra motivated by mm -hmm. that because I wanted something in my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, achieved good, good results. I finished, uh, you know, in the National University of Mexico, the career of international relations. Mm -hmm. And then my dream was to knock on the door of the foreign ministry to say I want a job and I want to eventually become a member of the Mexican Foreign Service. So I got a job, a very, very basic job in the beginning, you know, like anyone else, working on newspapers, making press clippings, mm -hmm. preparing, you know, brief notes for my boss, etc. And then the public contest to become a member of the Foreign Service was called. And I just uh, presented myself and I got a position and I'm here, no? Wow. After 30 years of diplomatic career, wow. I was very honored by President Andres Manuel López Obrador to be ambassador of Mexico in Ghana. Wow. And, um, and that's, that's my dream became a reality. So wow. Ghana has a very important meaning to me wow. because it's my first post as, a, as, an, as ambassador. an ambassador. And wow. this is the, the moment that I can really fulfill the dream I had when I was a young. Child. Absolutely. Thank so you. I would like to tell to your audience that it's possible. I mean, you, you should not see that there's difficulties around, that I cannot because I don't have the money, I don't have the resources. You know what? If you have an idea, if you have a dream, go for it. You can achieve it. I did. It's possible. You know, I always dream about studying elsewhere, you know, going to England, going to the U.S., studying in France. Mm -hmm. You know what? I studied only in Mexico City, my BA. I couldn't fulfill the dream of achieving an MA or a PhD, PhD. etc., mm -hmm. because I need to start working mm -hmm. to support my family. Mm -hmm. But I did good. I mean, I cannot complain about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even I can tell you something maybe could be unbelievable, but it's absolutely true. How did I learn English? I mean, because obviously we received some training in, in the school. Now Mexico is more bilingual than when I was in mm -hmm. my eight years in school. Mm -hmm. But we have basic classes. But for me, the main lesson I learned how to, to, to speak the language was by listening songs. Wow. And I said, repeat it again and again and again. And then I watched movies with a cardboard in front of me, just not to read the subtitles. I was just basically doing like this, moving my, my hand up and down, just to conceal, to cover the right. subtitles to say, what did they say? And I say, ah, okay. And then again, repeat and listen. And wow. you know what? Probably I could benefit from speaking better English, but that wow. came in my practice, in my professional practice. But, uh, you know, it's possible. What I want to convey to your audience is that it's absolutely possible, to, possible. To, 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 to achieve something significant in your life mm -hmm. and not to think that because of the absence of, of the means you're, you're not going to become successful in life. Right. You have to build your success story, and, and no, nothing okay. comes for granted. It's hard work, it's dedication, it's having an idea in your mind and go for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean, and never give up. That's, right. that's the goal in life, never give up. Sometimes 
I didn't understand some of the lessons. I have to go back and, and study again and repeat. And yeah, it's dedication. But in the end, it's worth it. So I'm yeah. very happy that I'm, I'm just here basically fulfilling my dream. And to, to do it, obviously, I'm in the best place possible in the, the world best, to achieve the it. Best, the best. With nice people, beautiful oh, yeah. weather, beautiful um, atmosphere in every single way. Uh -huh. With a lot of color in the streets, a lot of culture, a lot of traditions. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely blessed no, by, by, by the possibility of being here, okay. so I'm very grateful Thank to you be in your so country. Much, yeah. If you didn't hear anything, he said it is possible. So coming to Ghana, what have been the highlights of your moment here? What did you expect when you were coming? And when you got here, what really amazed you? Right. Well, so many things mm -hmm. have amazed me. I mean, the first I have to be absolutely <laughs> candid and honest with you is obviously the presentation of letters, the possibility of you know, seeing President Nana Kufuado was uh -huh. fantastic. Again, it's the first time I presented credentials to a foreign dignitary. Right. And um, be there, I mean, and understanding the protocol, uh -huh. the beautiful protocol uh -huh. that you have here in Ghana. Right. I mean, when you stand, you know, in the, in the dais, you hear the national anthems, and then you have to walk. And there's this, you know, group of local um, tribes, playing the drums, uh -huh. and you have to bow before the drums. I found that amazing, you know, because it's part of the culture and the tradition. And then enter that beautiful hall, and then being able to present my credentials to, to President Akufado, that was a highlight, right. certainly, because it was the consummation of many dreams, you know. They came together in that very specific ceremony that is protocol for this culture, but these is traditions of the country. And that was my start in Ghana, no? listening to that and understanding that, hey, it's not just another post, it's a very special post. Mm -hmm. no? So that was probably one. The second one certainly was to visit the Asante Gen in Kumasi. Right. In Kumasi, I mean, it was a fantastic experience. I decided to, you know, not fly, but to, to, to take the road. I wanted to see how was the way from Accra to to Kumasi and, and to see the, the towns and to see the different areas and it was fantastic and then obviously when I stand before His Majesty was also a fantastic experience, a very knowledgeable man, mm -hmm. very intelligent, very very wise in his approach to, to what the relationship between Mexico and Ghana was all about. So, so we agree and that there's so many things that we need to, to do together. As I told you, I, I asked for his, his blessing in terms of conveying the, the Ghanaian culture to the Mexican people and the Mexican people to be able to perform here properly right. and to display what is the Mexican culture all about, no? Okay. So there's so many things that I have to tell you that, that are really amazing. Those are two highlights. Well, the other is to discover the Ghanaian people, uh -huh. to discover the attitudes, to discover the authenticity of the people. It's very important because right. I cannot do my job if I don't understand who you are, where are you coming from, no what are the dreams of also of the Ghanaian people, right. you know, right. and how do they behave, how do they react, mm -hmm. you know, and then I see I, I have plenty of brothers and sisters, you know, people that I learn in these five months to, to, to love, no, because of the interaction of, with all my colleagues here in the embassy, mm -hmm. the local staff, mm -hmm. with all the people I have met in the streets that are very helpful, very direct, very willing to support you in any wow. any problem you experience. That's probably a highlight because obviously that enables me to do a better job because I try every single day to understand. I'm far from understanding completely the Ghanaian culture. I need to know more. I need yeah. to learn more. Yeah. I need to prepare myself better. But uh, definitely this is a very fertile ground, very, very prolific in terms of experiences that I'm going to be able to grasp and to, 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 to do a better job. Okay. Then other than that, I can tell you that we are trying to work really hard to, to put the relationship back on track. Mm -hmm. COVID, as you know, COVID-19 certainly hit us really hard. Mm -hmm. Mexico reopened its embassy back in 2015. Okay. You know, so five years ago, six years ago will be soon. And um, certainly after that process that we reopened the embassy, we did a very good job. My predecessor, Ambassador Arriola, did a fantastic job in terms of knocking on different doors, presenting Mexico before different groups of interest, politicians, 
business community, the academic sector, etc. No, that was she did a fantastic job, right. but then COVID came, COVID came and, and put everything in store. So now the idea is how to how do we revive the relationship? I don't want to infer that the momentum was lost mm -hmm. because our partners are there. The people that we have been able to meet mm -hmm. and making good relationships are there. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is to really, really re-engage again back to, to motion. No, right. We need to, to, to really put the relationship again at the forefront of things. And for that, obviously, it's important that first we defeat this horrible situation that we are experiencing so far. I'm amazed that the Ghana is doing a fantastic job in that regards because if you see the number of cases, the number of disease, fortunately are not, are not. It's uh, really being managed. It's, well. it's very, very well managed, and I see a lot of social awareness in the streets. Right. And I encourage the people to continue doing that because that's that's certainly something very, very amazing. Mm -hmm. When I see these. Uh, buckets, you know, uh, Veronica back. the Veronica buckets, uh, you know, when people, I mean, you don't, again, it's, it's, it's quite smart, mm -hmm. the, the idea, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have probably all these proper installations, but that's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's Veronica bucket. You can basically wash your wash hands, your hands keep them clean, mm -hmm. protect the others by wearing the mask, mm -hmm. etc. I see that, that this is probably the, the biggest asset. And yes, vaccines are flowing into the country. That's fantastic. Right. Eventually, we will be in a better place. And that's what we're looking for. So right. step one is we need to get rid of this situation. Right. Step two, of course, would be for us to, to find our contacts again, to, to reaffirm, mm -hmm. to reassure that we're here to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't reopen the embassy just to have another embassy and okay. you know, another post and that's it. No, okay. we need to achieve results. And right. to do with that, we need to understand where is the potential, you know. So, number two is we see our, our contacts. We see our, what we call the champions of the relationship. Okay. But step three would be to really, really present to them projects that are meaningful, uh -huh. projects that are achievable, Great. things that we can do together for common benefit. It's not what I want to impose here and I don't want to be imposed anything. That's not the way of diplomacy. Right. The way of diplomacy is finding common ground, finding things that we can benefit from each other and that's going to render results for our respective societies. No? So, and there's plenty. I mean, in the agricultural sector, we have plenty of opportunities. Uh -huh. As you see, Ghana is, is amazing in terms of the auto industry. Right. You're achieving important results. You know, uh -huh. when I see... Volkswagen now in Ghana, when I see now Toyota also in Ghana, Kia, you know, there are so many projects that are now come to fruition, uh -huh. that are a reality for, for the country. That's right. simply amazing. Okay. And Mexico can contribute that in that regard. I mean, the auto, auto parts industry is a very important one in Mexico. Uh -huh. Our automotive industry in Mexico is, is, is considerably okay. big. We have the top producers of cars in the world. Mm -hmm. Most of the major brands operate in Mexico, and we learn a lot from them. Right. So we need to exchange practices, best practices with a country like Ghana. The minister Cherry Martin is quite active in that regard. I met him, and he's absolutely hands-on to make that happen. Right. I mean, with the auto part industry in Mexico, the manufacturing of autos, auto parts, Mm -hmm. or spare parts, it's going to be something that we can do together quite well. Mm -hmm. We have some other aspects that we can work together mm -hmm. in terms of um, confectionery industry, for instance. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, huge potential as well in the pharmaceutical industry. You see what we experience in, in COVID-19, yeah. shortages of many That's things, yeah. of medicines, of masks and, and disinfectants, yeah. you know, we, we can work together towards achieving some goals like that. So okay. in that area, we have very valuable things. There is an externalization process that Mexico have been working for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. It's an ancient technique to remove the aflatoxins out of the, out of the maize of the corn. So we need to recover that experience, wow. to bring it here. To, to let the people in Ghana know how to take advantage of that because, you know, the part of the wonders and probably the disadvantage of corn is that it's very nutritional, but it loses value very quickly. Yeah. 
if it's not the process, right, process, process well. yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that nixamalization process enables to maintain the nutritional value of the of the maize mm -hmm. and extend the, the, the life span of the, of the product in, wow. in proper conditions so for human consumption. So okay. that's in, certainly something that we need to reactivate because the process was already here. We, you know, came with some experts here in that field, okay. but we need to bring more and we need to spread the knowledge all over the place because it's important as well. So, right. so those are the aspects that I think that yeah. we can really, really achieve. And, and when I see that, if you leave Mexico City from the port of Veracruz uh -huh. in our the Gulf Coast of Mexico, uh -huh. just take a boat, imagine that, uh -huh. you can travel the sea and end up in Tema. So yeah. there's, there's no barriers, oh, okay. you know, we are neighbors, wow. really, we are neighbors, we are. you know, so in that regard, that's something that we can definitely do more. I want to see also the port industry working together. I know Tema Ports is in, in the process of improving and there's some other ports in, 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 uh, in the process of um, gathering strength here in, in Ghana. Okay. In Mexico, we want to do something similar in terms of moving easy products from one side to the other. If we have good logistics, we're going to do, 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 do very good business. Right. The problem is you have to resort to different places yes. that increase the cost. That's, that's, that's not uh, make any sense. So okay. we need to also to work in that that's regard. Right. So moving back a little, um, we have been engaged in bilateral corporations for the past 60 years. Yes. 60, and there will be some celebrations. Before you give us the whole notion about how it is going to be celebrated, how do we see the future of the whole corporation after everything you have spoken about has been brought to the daylight? Well, I see that we only have 60 years of relationships. Mm -hmm. 60. Those are the first 60, the initial 60. The initial 60. How do I see the future? I see bright. I see a very bright future. Why? Because we have the potential because I can see that there's plenty of complementarities out there. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are capable of building synergies. Right. You know, so if we are able to, to really convey that message to our business community, mm -hmm. things are going to start moving very rapidly, very quickly, you know, in a more efficient way. So I think that we have the full potential to really transform the relationship. Mm -hmm. What I want to say, and I repeat that over and over again, is that I don't want another protocolary relationship. I want that Mexico and Ghana be able to recognize that we are strategic partners. Wow. We are strategic partners. The problem is sometimes we don't see that. Mm -hmm. but we are. Yeah. And the matter that some people don't want to see that, probably because they haven't taken the time to, 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 to do that, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It does exist. Mm -hmm. And it's right there for us. That's so great. we need to really imprint into the relationship that, that, um, that idea. We're strategic partners. Why? Because we share so many things in common. Uh -huh. We have common positions in international organizations. Right. In United Nations, as your audience well know, uh -huh. Mexico now is a non-permanent member of the Security Council. Yeah. And Ghana was elected as well, as, well as, as, as a non-permanent member of the Security Council for the next two years. We're going to coincide next year. In wow. 2022, Mexico and Ghana, we will sit in the Security Council mm -hmm. together as non-permanent members. We have a plenty of topics in the international agenda wow. that we can, you know, Tissues align and talk, you know, mm -hmm. to, to solve some of the problems that are affecting the, our regional considerations, but as well as some of the big issues, you know, like climate change, you know, like, uh, you know, um, the pollution of our oceans and how to make... Uh, how to achieve the objectives of uh, the sustainable development of mm -hmm. the United Nations. So okay. there's plenty of things that we can do together in that regard. Wow. I see that Ghana is becoming the trade capital of Africa because of the fact that we have here in Accra the Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, Free Trade Area. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing thing as well. You know, Mexico has also... Uh, many, many uh, free trade agreements with many other countries in the world. We gather some experience and we want to also share out the best practices that wow. Mexico has. 
for the negotiations, for the successes, how to overcome hurdles and difficulties that sometimes we will face. I mean, okay. now Africa is embarking in this amazing project that um, I do believe is, is the right way to do things okay. here, to trade freely, to yeah. trade with the unimpeded trade, yeah, with the region. goods. Yes, and, and you know, that's very important. So yeah. we, we learned some lessons in the past that we can okay. certainly uh, convey and, and share with our Ghanaian friends here. Okay as to, to make this organization stronger. I know it's a continental organization, uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. but I know that the voice of Ghana is a very strong voice that is, is heard. No? So we want to work with, with the Ghanaian authorities also in that regard, no? to, okay. to make this effort significant and to achieve the results that you're yeah. looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As your word says, it is achievable. So yes. before we go for our very you know, first commercial break, so that we just take a water break, um, one of the areas that your country really chalks success is within the tourism sector. Looking back at our place, we are still picking up. Is there one thing that you are doing right that you think we should incorporate as a state, as a country, in order to get to the state where your country is as well, in regards to tourism? Yes. Well, tourism, yes, is, is a topic that we need to talk. And yeah. we need to talk extensively, Ghana and Mexico. Because the youth are really interested. Absolutely. In well. And you know the youth should be interested in what Mexico has achieved with the tourist industry. Uh -huh. Because I don't, I don't believe that you can, you know, take the experience of one country and introduce in yours and be successful. No. Uh -huh. You have to adapt. You have to uh -huh. learn about the different experiences. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. Mexico has been learning a lot about other countries do, uh -huh. but we have adapted that into our normal conditions, our offer, our characteristical, uh -huh. geographical, you know, all the, the, the things that we, we have. Tourism is a major thing in Mexico. Uh -huh. And you know, it's no secret that we have beautiful cities, and it's no secret that we have beautiful beaches, like Ghana, you know, and um, and the thing is that we, we were very able, I have to admit that, mm -hmm. we were very able to discover some touristical uh, products that we offer to the world. Mm -hmm. And th those are winning formulas. And I have to say that Ghana should also learn from that. Right. I mean, if you know, your audience consider that that is useful, I think that it's, it's, it's really significant. For instance, let me talk about one project that we have in Mexico that we call the Magical Towns. Okay. What do we mean by Magical Towns? Is there magic there? No, no, no. Magical Towns is a way that we use to, to describe a very picturesque town, a very unique community in its own merit. Wow. Let's say if you visit, for instance, I don't know, um, you know, um, a, a community in, in Querétaro. Querétaro, there is um, La Peña de Bernal. Mm -hmm. uh, La Peña de Bernal is it's, it's a small mount, so to say, mm -hmm. very beautiful. And then there's beautiful streets, there's beautiful, you know, trading posts of people mm -hmm. selling handicrafts. But it's a very unique, it's, when you go there, you feel the magic of the place. And that's wow. the reason why it's the magical magic town. towns, okay. magic towns. Because you feel the magic. It's very wow. enchanting because it's beautiful, picturesque. You just go for, you know, take a soda, uh, ice cream, tour the town. It's beautiful. You don't need anything else. There's a geographical attraction. There is this mountain, so to say, that you can see in the view of that. Wow. Mm -hmm. There is this town that you can walk. The streets are beautiful, well painted, etc. And people enjoy that very much. So, like that, we have so many, you know, Real de Catorce, we have uh, Tuxpan in Veracruz, we have in, in Pachuca, Hidalgo, and you know, each and every town in Mexico develop this idea. So, if Ghana can do something similar, according to their standards, I mean, it's not, again, to extrapolate one thing to the other, that never works, no. but our experience, you know, when, I'm, when I arrive here and I visited some of your communities here, I see that there's a potential there. Right. There's unique places that you can see, for instance, and that can be very attractive, okay. you know, and to, as to develop touristical uh, sites and, and tourist attractions 
that will make people wanting to visit. Mm -hmm. We have colonial cities. You know, we see all these churches built during the Spanish period where they occupied Mexico, etc. And during that, that, that period, I mean, they developed beautiful architecture. You can visit those. Mm -hmm. We have pre-Hispanic sites, archaeological sites. So, right. as you see, there are different products that we offer to the, to the world. That's an experience that Ghana can take advantage of because here you right. have a lot of tradition. A lot of tradition. A lot. And if you tell me that there is a, a product that you can go and you go to this community and then you see all these ateliers or these workshops where they produce the, the fabric, and that could be very attractive for bringing tourists, no? I know that the castles brought some tourists to, to Ghana in the past with the year of the return, etc., etc., no? I know that's, that's only one part. But your beaches require also a lot of attention because some of them are really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the logical infrastructure that you need to accommodate more and more people. Those are the things that Mexico did in Cancun, in Puerto Vallarta, in Acapulco. You know, but you see the beach is there. But then Ac Ac what is... Acapulco is a very popular... Acapulco thing. is a very important and very popular right. one. So, mm -hmm. again, I, I think that my mission here would be also to... to bring to the table that Mexican experience, uh -huh. again, not to copy, not to say this is the best way to do things. No, 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 no. This is the way we did it. I hope it renders some valuable experiences wow. for you in Ghana to, to see, oh, maybe this is interesting, no? Ecotourism, you know, historical sites, you know, colonial cities, gastronomic experiences. Uh -huh. If you say, okay, let's go to the 16 regions of Ghana to taste the food, uh -huh. you know? Right. Well, that would be amazing, you know. You have a point there. You know. Right. Uh, you know, and that, 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 that's, that's that's like, good. okay, now we travel to this area and we go to Kumasi, especially to taste this dish that is important. Then we move to this other, mm -hmm. you know, to taste other dish. You know, right. That would be something interesting. In Mexico, we have gastronomy tour, so to say, you know, gastronomic tours that you can go to taste different Cuisine. cuisines of the different regions in Mexico. So. Tourist industry in Ghana requires a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Your government is doing fantastic in great, that regard. Great. But I think that we have learned about that because we are a very attractive country in terms of tourism. And that's also my mission here, just right. to convey that experiences here right. for the benefit of the people here. Thank you so much. As we promised that every question that you would have you know, asked if granted the opportunity to recline on a couch next to the ambassador, we got you covered. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Right, so viewers and uh, uh, noble youth, welcome back to the Youth Time Show. I have been here with His Excellency Ambassador Enrique Excorza, the Mexican Ambassador to Ghana. And it has really been an insightful and exciting conversation over here. You would attest to the fact. So one important area to the youth, which we all would also attest, is education. And we'd like to find out from His Excellency the kind of offers that come our way as youth from his office. So, Your Excellency, I would like to find out, are there opportunities for Ghanaian youth for higher education in Mexico? Well, definitely, yes. We are working now to, to recover, I mean, to, to bring back to the table mm -hmm. one of the most important assets that we have for the bilateral relationship, which is some scholarship programs. Right. You know, it's not big in number, but it's very important in terms of taking, you know, some students to undergo some uh, degree in Mexico, especially okay. university, for instance, mm -hmm. or um, high school, we have that on the review. But uh, the possibility of going to Mexico to study, not only Spanish, of course, but it's important, but also some practical things in the National University of Mexico and some of the other universities, is based on a scholarship-based program. Mm -hmm. is that is the one that we want to, to recuperate. This is the one that we want to refurbish, mm -hmm. revisit, and possibly expand. No, right. I have to say that that was one of the victims of COVID, no? because all our educational cooperation 
was completely shut down, shut down with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But there's no excuse now to, to not to, to be able to, to say that there is a keen interest here in Ghana for the youth to go into places like Mexico and to, to study the language and to study other, you know, technical and, and professional uh, careers that they can perform over there, no? In the past, we have had very valuable experiences for the youth in that, and also for professionals. Even with the foreign ministry, we had some courses in Mexico for diplomats to go and to, to know more about Mexican wow. foreign policy, foreign, foreign policy, policy, sorry, and so, so many other areas, no? Education is key, and I cannot stress enough that if Mexico and Ghana, we are going to make, uh, build a strategic relationship, a, a very strategic alliance, mm -hmm. it has to be based on education. E wow. Education is everything. I mean, I want to see the business community trading more and more goods. I want to see more investments flowing from one side to the other, etc. Right. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But if we are going to invest in the future of our countries, mm -hmm. it should be in, in education, no? Wow. I'm, I'm amazed with the possibility that after, uh, 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 once we get rid of COVID, we can bring back some of the students. We have plenty of Mexican students here in Ghana. You would be surprised of wow. that. But they were people here, you know, knowing a lot about, you know, the history of, of Ghana, of Western Africa, etc. No, uh, here in, in, in the universities. Universities, the University of Ghana and the Universities of Mexico, they have established memorandum Attention. of understanding wow. just to exchange also. Well, that again, we need to recuperate. We need to bring right. back to the table. So I see that that is a, an area, a very noble area in right. which we can really work together quite well. There's interest in both sides. So right. it's, it's a winner. I don't see that, that we cannot take that it's a further. win-win for both sides. Absolutely. And, and I hope that as soon as we have the programs already in place, we can do the outreach and, and, and take be, the opportunity to talk to you to guys, know, to, of to let the youth know what right. we have, no? Mm -hmm. And that we have developed some products for them Thank as you. well. Wow. You know, one of the things, uh, talking about youth, uh, it's, um, is we, we, we organize, for instance, a drawing contest in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to say that uh, the, one of the Ghanaian, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a young woman, uh, she did an amazing job. She drew uh, something based on these stories of alebrijes. Alebrijes in Mexico, those are these mythical figures yeah. that exist only in your imagination. They're like spiritual creatures. Something <laughs> like that, you know, so you can see an elephant with like a claw and things like that. It, it, it exists only in your imagination. She drew something so fantastic and she, she just won uh, the, a prize and uh, we will be soon in the, within the framework of the celebration uh -huh. handing the prize to, to this young lady of wow. Ghana uh -huh. that she just merited, uh, she just won this, this, this important Wow. Reward, no? So, and again, it's motivation. Uh -huh. And the youth needs to be motivated, right. no? It was by a contest of drawing, drawing contest, or by performing studies abroad. You have many Ghanaian people studying Spanish. We have some testimonials here in the embassy, in our wow. website. We normally, uh, you know, present these, these testimonials of, of, you know, young uh, people here in Ghana saying, I went to... I want to learn more about Spanish. Mexico, and I, I'm learning Spanish, and I know in Mexico, you know, you have good techniques to learn more Spanish, and, and they talk and they offer those, those testimonials. So we need to work hard on the education right. field. That's the future of our countries, no? Yeah. And again, we want to remove this lack of knowledge, and the only possible way to do that is by achieving education. more and more education, right. especially you. with our youth. So with a lady who won like this, it is one of the countries, you know, the things that we are putting in place to improve girl-child education, which yes. is very important yes. in the whole of the sub-Saharan African region. We are yes. trying to improve girl-child education in the rural yes. areas. Is the embassy also helping the country to achieve this? Because it is right, one of the most important things of this government. Absolutely. We are, <laughs> we are working on something very concrete. I know we haven't developed that very intensively in the past, I, I should say. Mm -hmm. But th that is one of the areas I'm very, very interested in because, you know, Mexico now we are promoting the, a feminist foreign policy. It's, it's probably 
uh, something that outside some countries may not be properly understood. What is a feminist foreign policy? For us, it's very important because it's restoring the possibility that women and men play under the same level field. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important that we recognize that in the past everything was so prone to, to benefit men mm -hmm. and forgot women in the process. We now to, to level the playing field. We want that more and more women take active part in the development, in education, in achieving results in life. And that's the reason why in Mexico we say the, the, the feminist foreign policy, because we want to always attain balances, you know. So for doing that, we need more and more capable women. It's not a matter of quotas. Wow. You need to have women properly trained, knowledgeable, capable of competing under the same conditions with men, uh -huh. because this is what the generation equality means. Right. We need to develop a new generation of people that think under the same circumstances. No, right. I wash the dishes at home, and I have no problem. And I and, I, I, and in the past in my country we used to, say, to oh no it. no, <laughs> or men don't wash what, dishes, only like women. women. And guess you don't what? go to the kitchen. Exactly. The woman. Exactly. Oh, well, right. that that changed, mm -hmm. fortunately enough. Right. I wash, you know, the dishes. I cook. You know, I work in the in the home work. You know, the the, the duties at, at home. Yeah, because we distribute. You know, with my wife, responsibilities. Wow. She has responsibilities as well. As in in a in a normal home, society needs to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. That we can play under the same rules and and obviously what we can do to train the youth and especially women to attain better results in life. It's important. So yes. Mexico has been promoting this uh, Generation Equality mm -hmm. Forum just to, to make aware that we need to develop more and more progress in that field. Mm -hmm. And we're achieving good results. We're working that with France. And okay. It has been a fantastic experience. I have to say the, the Minister of Gender, uh, Sara uh, Adwoa Safo, participated in the, in the forum mm -hmm. and was a fantastic contribution wow. as well. And, and we want to, to develop more and more uh, projects like that. And so she's been doing fantastic. Yes, right? uh, to open up opportunities for women to be productive, to be capable, to have the knowledge, mm -hmm. and to compete on the, under the same circumstances. Right. No, not because of their woman. It's because they are properly trained, because wow. they have all the tools at hand. And they can compete because they have the same access than others, men, had uh -huh. no in, in the past so thank you so much today has been a revealing experience like nelson mandela will say and we are extremely grateful you know most people think you don't you don't you can't speak any Ghanaian language Aquaba. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know your popular what, what was the proverb the one uh the one that i learned yeah, now, yeah because i said that the, one of the first thing i said i don't know many things in ghana but i need to learn uh -huh. and i learned about one proverb that says Ubinima ubichere. Ubinima ubichere. ubichere. Which Aye. is, if, some, if you don't know someone teaches. Someone teaches. No, like the youth we don't know today, <laughs> you have taught us so much. And your final words for the youth, I think that is your camera. Anybody looking up to you who's so enthused about all that you have said, your story has motivated them because someone is watching from a rural area where there is no electricity, you just got access to your interview to watch. He says, this man also started from where I am and today this is where he he is now so it means it is achievable what would you tell such a person this is your camera thank you very much for this opportunity I think that the best message I can convey to the youth and to you beautiful people that are listening to me now is you have to dream we all dream but if you have a dream you have to put all the pieces together don't just dream just imagine what do you need to achieve and to fulfill your dreams. You are not going to be an Olympic runner if you don't start walking and then running a little bit fast and then faster and faster. So it's a process. You need to understand that in life, success is not something that comes from out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Success is something that you work every single day. So do your best. Dream. But put the pieces together. Take a piece of paper, write, mark down. This is what I want to achieve. And, and these are the, the necessary steps that I need. I need to go to school. I need to, to get dressed. I need to eat. I need to do this and that. And then, yeah, 
I need to study hard. I need to repeat my lessons and go back again and achieve results. And that is a process. You understand that life is a process. So don't let anyone tell you that it's not possible. Don't let anyone tell you that uh, you're not meant to, de to do this. You, you should not be dreaming. Dream. Dream and achieve your results and never, never give up. That would be my best piece of advice for you guys. Thank you so much. Dream and never, never give up as well. Never give up. And we are extremely grateful for having us on the show. So viewers, this has been the U Time Show with His Excellency Ambassador Enrique Excorza, the Mexican ambassador to Ghana. The show comes away another time. Do take care and keep safe. Bye for now.